Joining us now is former CIA operations officer Brian Dean. Right, Brian, thanks a lot for coming on tonight. Um, I don't even Always need to say it, but it's hardly a defense of the policies of the Russian government to ask, what is the cost to U.S. interests when any attempt to find common interests with Russia are denounced as unpatriotic? So what you're hearing right now out of D.C. is a lot of either or. Either you're with Russia or you're against it. And the bottom line in international politics and international affairs is it tends to be a heck of a lot more nuanced, a lot more complicated. Let me give you an example. Yeah. In Syria right now, we don't have a vested interest to spend hundreds of millions of dollars or send tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of troops. So we have to work with the Russians and to a degree even the Iranians to try to do what is in our interest, which is in that conflict, create stability, send those refugees back into Syria who are currently in Europe and places like Jordan, and move forward uh, with, with the interest that we have. And, and it's not... Wait, wait, wait a second, wait a interest. second, wait a second, Brian. Why are you carrying water for Putin and the mullahs in Iran? That, that, and I'm joking, but so, that is exactly the response yeah. you get from otherwise sober-minded yeah. foreign policy experts when you make the point that you just made, which in a normal moment would be considered totally conventional and obvious. So what's the cost to that? If you can't say simple things like that out loud without being attacked, like what happens to our foreign policy? Well, I think a lot of people don't understand how foreign policy works, which is we don't have friends, we have interests. Exactly. And we had temporary alliances, and that's how global affairs works now. That's how it has always worked, and it, that's how it will continue to work for many decades, if not centuries to come, because things change. So unfortunately, there are areas where we do have to collaborate and cooperate with the Russians. That doesn't mean, though, that we can't be honest about the, the fact that they did what they did in 2016. And I believe that as former intelligence officer, they did meddle. And I think that we have to hold them to account. But that our relationship with them is complicated. It always has been. It has been for decades. The Russians have been running anti-American propaganda efforts literally for a hundred years. They invented the idea that the moon landing was fake, that AIDS was created in a laboratory by American scientists. You could go on and on and on. We know this. But just to, and this sure. is again, I hate to say it because we're in the middle of a witch hunt, I feel I have to, this is not a defense of the behavior of the Putin government. It's merely an acknowledgement of reality. They're not the only country that seeks to undermine our position internationally. Can, can I get an amen to that? Well, preach on, brother, because, I mean, look at China, uh, China of course, starting back in the 90s, giving a whole bunch of money, certainly <laughs> to, to my party and to others. You, you, you go back in the time, the British, uh, in the run-up to World War II, had an exactly. office in New York trying to influence us to get us involved in, in the war. This and happens every day. That doesn't minimize, well, indeed, uh, although I think probably Pearl Harbor was much more of an influence on that than what the British did. But the, the, the point is this. We have complicated relationships with people all around the world, and we always will. That doesn't mean that we don't hold people to account and we don't push back and, in fact, in some cases, strike back very firmly. And that's what we need to do with Russia and Vladimir Putin. And we need to be honest about what he does to his own people. That is part of what our values are all about as America and Americans. I mean, th th that should be non-negotiable. At the same time, you have to have a very sober, to use your word, <laughs> very sober understanding of the complexities of the world. So I wonder if you were to set up this same set of standards, and again, for the fifth time, just because I know the thought police are watching tonight, this is not a defense of Russia. But if you were to set up the same moral threshold that we're imposing on the Russian government to like other allies we have, I don't know, I'm just picking one, the Saudis? I, I wonder sure. if it would be possible to do any business at all, or would you be accused of being a Salafi or a, you know, a sympathizer with Al-Qaeda if you said, you know, maybe we should do business with them? Yeah. Well, look, you can go to places in Africa where some of those leaders have been abusing their people for decades. Exactly. Uh, in some cases, there was one guy who actually uh, engages in cannibalism, for God's sakes. Jean so there are, some pretty horrific, there are some pretty horrific people out there in this world that we have varying degrees of relationships with. And it is tough. It is hard. And sometimes we have to give and sometimes we have to take. And on this relationship with Russia, we're going to have to do a mix of both. I think that we have to push back and push back hard. There's no question about that. They did what they did. Um, but we do need to start approaching things with a much more sober understanding in mind uh, about world affairs. And I don't think we're, we're, we're losing that nuance, Tucker. And, and that's scary for American security in the medium to long term. You're obviously not in Washington because there are no adults left here. Uh, but you should come and improve the tenor and the tone of the city. Thanks a lot for joining us tonight. I appreciate it. Always a pleasure.